So first of all, I want to pay homage to the wonderful compassionate work of the Tsushi USA in so many fields of activity to bring happiness and remove suffering. And through that, I also want to pay deep homage and appreciation to the Dharma Master Chen Yen in Taiwan, who began this wonderful movement of compassion tirelessly with full determination. And also I want to express my deep gratitude to the Tsushi Foundation team for having done a movie on our own activities at the service of others, at the service of those who are most destitute, through our foundation Karuna Sechen. Karuna, as you know, means compassion in Sanskrit, and Sechen is the name of our monastery in Tibet and Nepal and India. So yes, compassion, of course. This is the best part of human beings, and therefore I feel so attuned with your work. And I look at this beautiful documentary that you made on Karuna Session activities in India and Nepal, and thank you from my heart to help us spread that message of compassion. So compassion is not just a good feeling. It's not just to be nice. It's just as a naive utopian ideal that is, doesn't work in the real world. It is the most pragmatic answer to the challenges of our time. Selfishness has no chance to solve the problem of our times. We will never work for a more compassionate economy if we just promote or maximize our personal preference and immediate interest, which is the definition of the homo economicus. We need to step out of this voice of calculus and reason to bring the voice of care in the field of economy in the short term. In the mid term, compassion, kindness dictate us to remedy to poverty in the midst of plenty to address all kinds of suffering, whatever shape they take, wherever they are, whatever their causes might be, and to try our very best to do all we can to remedy to the cause of suffering. That is the definition of compassion. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the cause of suffering. That compassion stems from unconditional benevolence, which is the wish may all sentient beings without exception find happiness and the cause of happiness. So that is the drive that should make us to think, to speak, and to act. Now, this is not, again, just a naive idea. This is the best way to reconcile the need of the short term, a mother that needs to feed her child somewhere in Africa tomorrow, or some investor who is just looking at the balance sheet at the end of the month and the year, the short term. So for the short term, we should have more consideration for others so that economy is at the service of society and not society at the service of economy. In the midterm, we need to flourish in life. If we are in a country that is the most powerful and the richest and everyone feels miserable, what's the point? So people need to thrive in life. And for that, we need to provide the condition for thriving. And the good condition for thriving is to have good human relationship. That's the factor number one for sense of happiness, good quality of human relationship with others. And that comes with kindness, with altruism. We can't have good human relationship with being nasty, grumpy, short temper, jealous, proud, arrogant, craving, angry. No, we need to bring at the surface the best of ourselves, the best of human potential, bring the surface the Buddha nature and let it fully bloom and express for the twofold accomplishment of others and ourselves. Now in the long term, which is a new challenge, because 12,000 years ago, there were only about 5 million human beings on Earth. They already did quite a lot of damage, eradicating most of the big species, but still, no big deal. Now we are seven billions. So almost without unknowingly, we have completely damaged our planet and the fate of future generations. So now this is a new challenge. Therefore, 
consideration for future generations has become one of the key points of compassion and altruism. Otherwise, they will say, you knew and you did nothing. That's what Greta Thunberg was saying at the UN. This is a treason of future generations. We cannot afford that. Now, if you bring it around the same table, social workers, investors, politicians, religious people, scientists who know about the question of the environment and try to build together a better world. They need a concept to sort of seamlessly reunite the needs of those short-term, mid-term and long-term. Again, selfishness will not do the job. If you don't care for future generations, there's no environment problem because we won't be there. So only compassion, altruism has meaningful way of sort of uniting all our goals and working together towards a better world. On the individual level, this is also the best state of mind you can be in. If you think me, me, me all day long, what happens to me? What's going to happen to me? Hope and fear. It's such a limited world. Then you feel miserable and you make everyone's life miserable around you. If you are full of benevolence and compassion, you don't feel so vulnerable. This is the most gratifying state of mind. And of course, people will perceive it in positive ways because you are kind to them. <laughs> so they will love that. Even dogs will sense when there's a good person. So it's good from all aspects to cultivate altruistic love and compassion. There's no anything like unwanted side effect. So we should be brave and claim that altruism and compassion are, and cooperation, are what we need most and teach it in secular ways, in schools, emphasize how important is human relationship at the workplace, in social network, sort of fabric of the society. We cannot impose altruism on others, no more than we can impose how to be happy on others, but we can provide the condition for cooperation to bloom and not reckless competition where everybody kicks each other's leg. So therefore, let's acknowledge that. Let's dare to implement it in our own life and slowly within our family and within our village and within society. And there may be a time where this is the new sort of paradigm shift. This is where the evolution of cultures will lead us and we can be a much com more compassionate world. This is the way I think should be, because as uh, Martin Luther King said, we came in different vessels, now we are all in the same boat. All, most of the big issues, whether the environment or global health, are so global. We cannot play alone in our little corner for any of those big issues. So this is a matter of survival, and perhaps evolution will select the genes for more cooperation and compassion, because this is the only way we can go about. So again, this is something that we should do. I'm so, so glad that the Tsushi Foundation has put compassion at the heart of its activity, of its vision, of its thinking, is, in par is inspired by the view of Lord Buddha as putting compassion at the heart of the path, Compassion is the main road to being a bodhisattva, wanting to achieve enlightenment so that we gain the capacity to free all beings from suffering, the bodhicitta. What better aspiration than that could we make? So thank you so much. I fully rejoice in what you do and let's work together towards a better world. Thank you.